plus or minus square root of 3. So I have x equals 0, x equals root 3, which is why I had you take your calculators out, because I can't do that, and negative root 3. Those are my critical numbers. You okay with your critical numbers? Yes, no? Yeah. Take a square root of 3. You have 3 and root 3. 1.7 something. What's next? Now, the reason why we simplified this as much as possible is for our second derivative. Let's go ahead. I'm going to do the second derivative. Why don't you try on your paper as well, uh, see if we can match up with the right answer. So 7 over 3. Sorry, 7 over 4. Is our second derivative. Okay. Oh, that's not as bad as you thought, huh? Hopefully not as bad as you thought. Did you get that far? If you're still going, still go. That's fine. Um, distribute, combine like terms, factor, simplify. You're going to get down to that point. Let's all, let's all make it down to this point. Are, are you okay that that is your second derivative? You know how to do the second derivative already. That, that's, that's not the issue with this, this problem, okay? I know you know how to do that. Your point now is let's find our possible inflection points or the, the numbers where we are going to change concavity. Can you tell me from here the numbers where I'm going to change concavity? I'll tell you one of them. So possible inflection points. I'll tell you one of them. One of them is x equals 0. How am I getting x equals 0? Yeah. In fact, you know what? That's kind of a key point for us. That was an undefined point from the very beginning, right? If you take a quotient rule, look at that. It's going to come back again because you're just squaring it. Take a, a second quotient rule, it's going to come back again because you're, you're, you're just squaring it. So that's going to be undefined, it's going to be a critical number, it's also going to be a possible inflection point where we change concavity. It shows up a lot in our problem. You okay with the x equals zero? Now, the factoring is nice for us because it says if you set this equal to zero, which is what you're supposed to do, you can clear out the denominator. We had to include that point because it did make an undefined second derivative, so we do have to include it, the x equals 0. But now you can say, ah, 2 times x squared minus 6 equals 0. You set the numerator equal to 0. Are you with me on that one? Yes, no? Yes. Okay. But the, the 2, does the 2 do anything for you? So if you divide by 2, basically you're going to get x squared minus 6 equals 0. You're going to get x squared equals 6. And you're going to get plus root square root of 6. Okay, yeah, I understand. Not very nice numbers. I get it. But can you find them? Yeah. Now, the point is, as soon as we do our first and our second derivative, we're going to make our table up.
from our first derivative, it said you're going to have something special happen at zero, maybe. You're also going to have something special happen at the square root of three and the negative square root of three. Are you okay with the points that we got from the, the first derivative, everybody? Are you all right with that? Negative root 3, zero, 0, especially, and the root 3. Are you okay with that one? Yes. Now, the next one says, okay, you still have from our possible inflection points, 0. <coughs> then you have root 6. Root 6, to the left or to the right of root 3? It's actually pretty important to put this in the proper order, right? So you have to have root 6 over here somewhere. <coughs> negative root 6. Now we're going to do what with this after you find those numbers? Are they hard to find? Not really. Not really. What do you do now after you, you have the negative 3, 0, root 3? What do you do? Plug them into the derivative. Well, wait, plug that in? Yeah. That's going to give you 0. Test them in the Test original function. If I plug that into the original function, that will give me points, which I'm going to have to do in step number 6. Yes. Look at you need to know what happens here. You need to know what happens here, 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 here. But all those little intervals, right? You've got to know which area to plug him into. Where am I going to plug in points from all these four? That's why we have that first derivative. And these are going to go into the second derivative. So let's go ahead and try that. <coughs> For this one, I'd plug in negative 2. I'd plug in negative 1, 1, and positive 2. We do it in the first derivative. So if I plug in negative 2 here, so f prime of negative 2, f prime of negative 1, f prime of 1, f prime of probably positive 2. I don't really care about the actual value, all right? I really don't. I care about the sign, positive or negative. So we're going to take negative 2. Plug it into the easiest one to, to work with. That's this one. If I take negative 2, I know I'm going to have negative 4 plus 3. That's a negative number over a positive number. Did you get a negative as well? Yes. Negative. Hey, hey, what's negative mean in relation to this? Decrease only. Decreasing, very good. Because it's a slope, negative slope means decreasing. <coughs> Plug in <coughs> negative 1. If I do negative 1, I get, remember that you don't square this negative, right? That says negative x squared. So this will be negative 1 plus 3, that's 2, over it's positive. What's positive mean? Increasing, increasing. Don't just say up, because that could be misconstrued as concave up. I want to say increasing or decreasing. How about one? Let's try one. If I try one, do you see I'm going to get the same exact thing as negative one? Because that says negative one plus two, that's, that's positive over a positive. That's positive. So, is that a relative extreme? This one. Oh. No, that zero actually didn't change, right? We're increasing and increasing again. That's interesting. How about that, the two? Negative. It's going to be negative, yeah, for sure. You plug in the two, you get negative over positive. That's a negative. Now let's try our, <coughs> our second derivative. If we do, for those of you who really have the hang of this, can you do me a favor right now? Can you start finding me points? I think I can pretty much take care of the zero, but I'm going to have a hard time plugging in the square root of negative 3, root 3, negative root 6, and root 6. Um, so if you want to try this as I'm going through the second part, if you really get to grasp this. Left side of the room, my left side, you guys try the root 3 and 3, root 3. Um, you guys try the negative root 6 and root 6 in the original, <coughs> original. Okay, can you do that for me? Give me two, like the first, I don't even care, the first step is as fine, 2.5 or whatever. Now, for our, our second derivative, we're also going to try some values in these intervals, but you're going to plug them into the second derivative. So f double prime of, that's going to be like negative 3. Double prime of negative 1. Double prime of 1. Double prime positive 3. 
If I do that, if I do that, if I take the negative 3 over here, that's going to be a positive <coughs> over a negative. I have a negative. What's negative mean, by the way, when I'm talking about second derivative? Concave down. If I plug in negative 1, notice what we do. We've got 1 minus 6, that's negative 5. Over a negative, that's going to be a, that's a positive. Concave up. If I try positive 1 here, I'm going to get a negative over a positive, that's going to give me a negative. And if I try 3, I have a positive over a positive, that's going to give me a positive. By a show of hands, how many people feel okay with our concavity at this point? Right, are you guys okay with this? You guys over here, yes, no? So we've checked this in the second derivative. We got this was a negative interval, positive interval, negative interval, positive interval, concave down, up, down, up. Were these inflection values? Does concavity change here? And here, and all, all of them, actually, we had different concavities. Step number six is you have to find all of your points. So right down here, I'm going to write my points. I know for my x-intercepts, I'm going to be at 1, 0. And negative 1, 0. My y-intercept, I didn't have any. So that just came from my x-intercepts. Now, I also have all, all this junk over here. So my relative max and relative min, can you tell me which one of these is going to give me my relative maximum? My relative maximum. Is it going to be the negative root 3 or the positive root 3? Positive. positive. This one's going to be a relative minimum. So relative max. Relative min. The relative max will be at square root of 3 comma something. I don't know what it is. Negative square root of 3 comma something. Uh, somebody who plugged in the square root of 3, about how much did you get? 0. 0.38. 0.38? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's say 0. 0.4. Is that negative 0. 0.4? Negative 0. 0.38. Okay. Are you okay getting those numbers? Do you, do you remember where I'm getting these numbers from? Where do I plug in the root 3s? The, not the first derivative, not the second, but the original function is going to give you points. Are you okay on that so far? You sure? We're almost done. Almost done. Now, let's do the root 6s. The root 6s are my inflection points. Negative square root of 6. And the square root of 6. Somebody plugged in the negative square root of 6. How much do you get? 